Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. Here's Eddie Fedrick. So glad you can join us. Trinidad and Tobago can breathe a sigh of relief as nearly a million doses of China Sinopharm vaccines arrived. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Friday 16th July 2021. Details when we return. Did you know that your friends and family can now shop at the Food Fair from anywhere in the world and you can receive here in Grenada? The Food Fair and GrenadaMarket.com now make it possible through secure online shopping and personalized customer service. Simply send your loved ones a list of your preferred items or let them fill an online basket and the items will be available for pickup or delivery. Visit GrenadaMarket.com or thefoodfair.gd today for more details. The new norm. Spread the news. Welcome back. A significant day in the life of Trinidad and Tobago's health sector is how Minister Terence Dial Singh has described the arrival of 800,000 Sinopharm vaccines on Tuesday from China. Minister Dial Singh spoke during the Ministry of Health's media conference on Wednesday. More from TV6's Elizabeth Williams. I would like to sincerely thank the Sinopharm company and the people of China who have really responded to our calls, bilateral agreements have been signed, and yesterday's shipment will help us move from managing this disease to hopefully having some degree of control over it. Minister the Singh said lockdown and closure measures cannot be a permanent solution during this COVID-19 pandemic. The permanent solution has to be vaccinating as many people as humanly possible so that life as we know it can go back to some degree of normalcy. Minister Dial Singh said with the 800,000 Sinopharm vaccines, approximately 600,000 citizens can be vaccinated by August, which is 60% of the adult population. I want to congratulate the Honorable Prime Minister yesterday who yesterday took his Sinopharm shot. And his quote was, he took what was available, something we have been saying all the time. Whichever vaccine is placed before you, that is WHO approved, that is your stamp of approval. He said now 20,000 to 25,000 persons can be vaccinated daily, especially with the 109 health centers, six vaccination sites, and private sector sites in operation. The clarion call this morning is like the Prime Minister says. He took the vaccine that was available to him. He led by example. It's for us now to take up that mantle and to follow that leadership. So... He drew reference to international news reports of recent COVID-19 deaths. Almost all U.S. COVID-19 deaths now in the unvaccinated. The current research in the United States is saying that 99.5% of the deaths due to COVID in the United States is among the unvaccinated. He said these mass vaccinations sets the stage for the reopening of the economy, saving lives, reopening of the food and beverage industry, and the reopening of schools. We have to find a way to live with the virus, but we could control it because we have a very serious weapon in our armory now, and that weapon is a vaccine. Elizabeth Williams, TV6 News. Meantime, Labour Minister Stephen McClashy has reassured workers that they will have some degree of protection at the workplace where it concerns the issue of COVID vaccination, as government is currently working on a framework which should be taken to Cabinet within the week. Meantime, one opposition senator is calling for children to be included in the vaccination policy. Renessa Cutting of TV6 News has some details. As reports surface of workers being pressured by employers to get vaccinated against COVID-19. If we are not vaccinated and the company stays closed, by August the 2nd, they will declare bankruptcy. 
in which they will start laying off workers. The workers that will be laid off first will be the workers that are not vaccinated. The workers that will they will keep are the workers who are vaccinated. The Ministry of Labour says it has already initiated action to safeguard the interests of both employer and employee in this regard. The Industrial Relations Advisory Committee has been tasked with that item. Uh, my information is that the Ministry of Labour, we should be getting the draft report or a draft report by the end of this week. So my take is by next week we would have something available for discussion, um, which we would then take to Cabinet for approval. At this time, consultations are being held with workers' unions and the private sector on the matter. But there's no consensus yet on what form the framework will take. And when this process is finished, it would be a set of guidelines, but nothing would be mandatory either for the employer or the employee. Well, I can't say that would be determined by Cabinet. Cabinet will determine whether they will turn it into um, policy or guidelines. And then the associated, I believe, maybe, maybe legal regulations will be put in place to deal with it. But at this point in time, I cannot say what it would be. The minister adds that despite murmurings in the public domain that some entities are pressuring employees to get vaccinated against COVID-19, no official reports have been made to the ministry. The president of the industrial court, Deborah Thomas Felix, would have indicated that um, employers um, do not have the right to force vaccination on employees, but they can implemented for new employees and so on. So she was very clear in my um, observation that we should not be, um, we should not be punitive towards members of staff who do not wish to take the vaccine because it is not mandated under law anyway. Meantime, opposition Senator Jayanti Lachmedial is calling for government to effect a policy now, which will also make provision for persons under the age of 18. There are legislative measures that deal with mandatory vaccinations for children entering school. It is special majority legislation. You all need to look at it, you need to consider it, and you need to come up with a policy before the next pandemic. Because we are still waiting since last year, the start of this pandemic, from a, for a work-from-home policy. And we have not seen it as yet. So I would like to know when the government plans to bring the policies to address these matters, or is it that we are going to wait until all hell breaks loose? Renessa Cutting, TV6 News. <laughs> strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Barbados records another day of double-digit positive COVID-19 cases. Details in this Barbados Today report. On Tuesday, the Bastos Santos Public Health Laboratory identified 17 new COVID-19 cases, 6 males and 11 females out of 898 tests. The number of people in isolation rose to 108. Since the first case was recorded in March 2020, Barbados has recorded 4,213 confirmed cases of COVID-19. The virus has claimed 48 lives. Despite running low on vaccines, the Bahamian Health Minister, Reynold Wells, is assuring his countrymen that more are coming. Details in this eyewitness news item. Despite mounting concerns over a reported shortage of vaccines in country, Minister of Health Reinhard Wells assuring the public Tuesday that government is expecting more donations soon through COVAX. The concern rising after reports reached eyewitness news that individuals were not able to book vaccination appointments beyond July 22nd. We are eagerly awaiting um, 
AstraZeneca on July 26th. Now, the current state of emergency is expected to end on August 13th, and this is based on the fact that officials are expecting to reach herd immunity by that time. But with only a few weeks shy of that date and only one-eighth of the population vaccinated, the minister was asked whether or not we could see changes to that date. He says, however, there are no current discussions about such. Uh, the governor general will have to call the House of Assembly back into session to be able to do that. But as it stands now, uh, we're moving forward as we would have uh, intimated in the past, which is the emergency orders ends on the 13th of August. Over in Guyana, the COVID-19 death toll surpassed the 500 mark milestone as the Ministry of Health reports the death of four more people on Wednesday, bringing it to a total of 503. Gordon Mosley of News Source Guyana reports. In the past 12 days alone, the country has recorded 27 COVID-19 related deaths. The four latest deaths were recorded in regions 1, 3, 6 and 10. In addition to the four deaths, the Ministry of Health has also recorded 168 new cases of the virus, with the majority of those new cases being recorded in Region 9, which borders Brazil. The number of cases in Region 9 has been climbing steadily, with more than 400 active cases in the region. Officials of the region have been calling for a full lockdown of the Region 9 communities as they continue to blame persons crossing the borders and those heading into the region for the ongoing spread and spike in new cases. Guyana continues to see a spike in new COVID-19 cases with the authorities doing very little to address the increase. In the past three months, more than 10,000 new cases were recorded, representing more than twice the number of cases that were recorded in the first year of the pandemic in Guyana. The government recently reissued the same COVID-19 measures that have been in place for several months with no changes. The opposition has been calling on the government to do more to stem the increase in new cases. Just recently, former President David Granger accused the PPC administration of ignoring the impact of the pandemic locally in the name of doing business. Right now, there's a haste. People are putting profits ahead of, you know, you know, the government is putting profits ahead of people's um, health and security. They're trying to open up too quickly. And um, you see what's happening. The hinterland, the hinterland has been a major source of, of infection. And we need to have the police on the borders. We need to have um, these mobile enforcement teams uh, going out to the areas, preventing Diana from being, uh, you know, reinfected. But what I would say is that things went out of out of. Uh, kilter after 2nd of August, and right now, um, the, hardly a day passes without two or three deaths. This never happened before. The opposition has been calling on the government to implement tougher measures and ensure enforcement to tackle the increase in new cases. Hubbard's big promotion is back. Live free for one year. Spend $50 or more in any Hubbard's department and receive a chance to win. Big prizes every month. Property or vehicle insurance for one year. Free internet, cable and data for one year. Free fuel for one year. Free cooking gas for one year. Free electricity for one year, free drinks for one year, extra cash account, and the big free groceries for one year. Promotion runs from April 1st to September 30th, 2021. Live free for one year with Hubbard's in association with Solgas, Flow, Grenadian General Insurance, Cara Brewery, Coca-Cola, Grenada Bottling Company, Grenlec, Communal Cooperative Credit Union, Dutch Lady Milk, Promo, Danny and Supreme. Terms and conditions apply. I'm Eddie Frederick, wishing you a restful weekend. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.